I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. Welcome to our crowd surfing. And I'm crowd, crowd surfing. Uh, Gen Con style, I guess. Sure. Surfing on the waves of Gen Con. Open Gen Con style. Anyway. <laughs> that fits. That it's works. Good. It's Gotta good. be going through graphic games. Dude. Dude, he's like running down it. the aisle. There's graphic like games. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, what that means is likely there will be more big crowd surfing projects next week I would assume mm -hmm. a lot of times people like to launch stuff during Gen Con itself that way they can you can come to the booth and they're like back it now here's a computer here's a credit card I, I, I lift it from your wallet back it do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea though because I like you know there's this like hey you can back this right now we'll send it to you in a year or you can walk six feet that way and buy a game I wonder I do wonder hmm. I now, for me personally, backing at a, a convention is not interesting to sure. me. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. First things, we're going to take a look at some of the projects that are in Kickstarter. Let's get started. All right. Okay, so the... Okay, so firstly... Um, uh, as a, just as a reminder, when we look at these projects, I only look at projects that are going to be ending in the next two weeks or so because we'll talk about the other ones next time. So we're gonna start here with D60 and D60 Spin Down Dice by Flying Horse Duck. That sounds like a made up. Flying Horse Duck? No, the whole thing just sounds like it's a made up thing. It sounds like a fake project, yes. But um, you know, they, they'll sell you a D60 for about $40. Who needs a D60? Okay. Hey man, <laughs> somebody. <laughs> Several people, at least uh, 135. 135 people. Okay, well, I want one, but here's the thing about these that I find f fascinating is that they made two of them. They made the D60 and the D60 spin-down die. Right. As if, I've had people, like, email, like, we've used those D20s that we have, those big giant ones, uh, and they're yeah. like, oh, those aren't the same they're, as a they're die. Spin they're spin-downs. Who cares? It really doesn't matter if there's a one on the side and a two on a, it doesn't matter where the numbers are. You could argue maybe the die is slightly weighted towards one, then you might roll more high than more low, but it doesn't matter. Okay, that being said. I disagree. Do you? Oh, I mean. You don't care. Tell the truth. I don't care either. It's a, it's a random figure. Also, so they have these D60 as as you quick randomize tables. randomize it enough in your hand. These D60 quick tables says it lets you use a D60 to, with the table, to mathematically do a specific die roll, like 8d4. <laughs> I know, I know, okay, I know. Okay, sure. Ugh, ugh. This was a weird one. They're also really expensive. They're metal, right? They're like uh, some titanium grade or aluminum or something. What's it, 40 bucks? 40 bucks for a die, man. Right. Well, without no, a bag. It comes with that a, a, attractive carrying I'm case. I'm good. So. I don't need a <laughs> bag for one die. I want it. Yeah. Uh, you have a sickness, though, so it's... Yeah, I really want it. Yeah, you've got... You're, you're a dice hoarder, so I don't of course have a, you want it. I don't have a D60. That's all I'm saying. Not my pick of the week, and, is all I'm saying. And you've <laughs> needed one how many times in all of these years? I don't, have a, I don't need a D27. I got one of those, too. I know. I, shut you're up. You're not helping yourself. Shut up. All right. I use it for tumbling dice. Okay. The Damsel's Tale Final Hour... Oh, wait. Is it just a Damsel's Tale? Yes. Yes. But it's in, a fi final, it's in its final hours because I have 22 hours to go. Can you change the title of a project? Sure. Yeah. Boo, I don't like that. Has custom printed meeples in three player mode. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sam, this is, this is the one you were showing me. me up a rule. <laughs> yeah, because it's a two player game. They it's unlocked a, a third player. Yeah, a two versus one. That's a really different thing, by the way. If you have a game that plays like two to five and you unlock a six player mode, all right, sure. But a two-player game, and well, through the campaign, you're like, now it's an all-versus-one game. No, they call it an expansion, where you can play two-player or you can play two-versus-one, which is still a two-player game played by three people. Yeah, it tiptoes into that whole... This game we've had is, this argument before, actually, with X-Wing. Oof. 
you again, it is a two-player game, but it plays well with three players, All especially right. if you have three different factions on the board. Well, that didn't happen until after that. Top ten came out. All right. <laughs> I think the game looks interesting, though. (laughs) This whole play two cards, lowest value, resolves first. Reminds me a little bit of Raptor. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to the idea of this game. I think it looks... uh, That board doesn't excite me very much. Um, Looks okay. Except the pieces are moving on it by themselves. No, it won't do that, though, in real life. Are you sure? Yes. All right, fine. It's animated. It looks interesting enough, I guess. Uh, the game, but the presentation probably could have done better for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not pick of the week for anyone? Okay. Nope. No. Game Toppers 2.0. We've been talking about this. <coughs> the, uh, these. The, there's a contest going on. I guess it's still running now because there's still 23. So you can check out their uh, website to find more about this contest. And one of the Dice Tower listeners is going to win one of those mats. Love and this right. is then one day to go. Now, we, nice. we are friends with Berkey, so we yes. know him really well. And these are, we talked about this a lot, these are toppers that go on tables. I think they're cool. I really like these mats, though. Well, I got to see these in person at Origins. The mats? And they are great. They look really good. They feel very nice. And therefore, and, and, I should say, oh. the rest of the picks this week are kind of... Not great. So this is my pick of the oh, week. Oh, my word. <laughs> yeah, baby. My pick of the week right here. Get yourself a table. You have games. You have a bunch of games. You're not going to get these games for months, maybe years. Get a table instead and play the ones you've got, you slacker. slacker. Open them first. <laughs> Thanks. This message brought to you. But I, I like these mats like this that have stuff on the outside, but the middle you can still put a game board in. Yes, right. The... Let me see. There's one here I like. I like the castle a lot. The ones I saw, I only saw two. I think he had two of them there. Two or three. And I like that. I like that it gave me the best of both worlds. Because I like the artwork on those mats, but they're too busy to play on normally. Sure. For me. And these had, like you said, the artwork on the outside, some nice, you know, design... And then the center is basically clear. Yeah, my favorites are I the, really like that. the Space, the Viking, and the, and the Ryan Lockett. The Ryan Lockett, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all really good. Oh, it's just called the Ryan Lockett. Oh, yeah, that is cool. And also, they're, like, stitched on the side, mm-hmm. these mats, so they're not going to mess up like a mouse pad mat might eventually. All right, cool. Copenhagen Roll and Write. Hmm. Um, this is... I like Copenhagen. You've played Copenhagen, right? No. Oh, you still haven't played it yet. Copenhagen is essentially a Tetris-style board game, so I'm assuming this is a Tetris-style roll and write that looks very similar, but with really generic-looking components. Copenhagen is a pretty game. This looks interesting. You like Copenhagen? I like it a lot. I didn't sit there and go, I hope they make a roll and write game about it. Did it already feel kind of like a roll and write where you just get pieces? instead of having to write them on. That's the problem I'm having with roll and writes these days, is that oh, there yeah. is, That's a lot true. of the time, these roll and writes that come out, there's no good reason for it to be a roll and write game other than that type of game is hot right now. You could have done this with a couple of plastic bits in different shapes, and I wouldn't have to pull out a pen. Oh, yeah, you're right. That does. That's essentially the same thing as the game, almost. Mm-hmm. I just That's what broke I was thinking Tom, as well. Think. Have you uh, played Copenhagen? No, I, but I mean, if you just look, if you look at the board, because they do have uh, a level at which you can buy this and Copenhagen, it's like a miniature version of the game. Yeah, for me, a roll and write needs to have a reason to exist as a yeah, roll right and there, write. Right there. That's a big roll and write box because the Copenhagen box is not. Well, those might not be to scale to each other. That's true. They probably aren't. Interesting. All righty. I mean, it might be great. I want to get Copenhagen. I've seen these acrylic tiles for it, so you can go back get for the Copenhagen part. And right. maybe the Copenhagen roll right is fantastic. But right, right. We right. don't know. It's kind of like when there's a big game with dice, and then they make the dice version of that game, and you're like, yes, same we're sorry, things. Copenhagen. Sorry, people. Copenhagen. It's Copenhagen. I'd uh, like to say Copenhagen. Or if, if we really pronounce it the way he has it, Copenhagen. Okay, so Enchanters, Odyssey plus Reprint. Copperhaven. I think I'm one of the few people in our area who likes this game. I really like Enchanters. I just reviewed the last one. I think it was called Enchanters Overlords. Yep. Um, They actually have that on there. Yeah, you can get the other expansions. a simple game where you basically put, you have one item. Mm -hmm. You start out with a, I think it's a fist of 
dragon stones? Of nothing or something? No, fist it's just of nothing. Okay. Fist of nothing, and basically, but then you add this stuff to it. So you, the fist of cultists, and then it's a anger of cultists, and then a great club of flying. You know, it's just. But as you add things, you get different stats, and your your uh, thing gets yeah, better I've and seen better. For you, yeah. I really like it. So this is your pick. It is not. I just like this. I don't know that this needed more stuff at this point. There's a ton of stuff already with overlords. That's you know not a not a great explanation of uh, the consumerism of board gaming. Did we need more? Did it sell? Then yes, yes we need more. <laughs> okay, no, no, I get that. I'm just saying that if you back this and you've never played before, I would not do the all-in pledge. I would pick one of the boxes Who are and get that. You talking to man, gamers? If you if this catches your eye in the least, you need to back it twice. <laughs> Get on this. <laughs> All righty. Well, anyway, I like this game a lot. Uh, complexity. Now, this one is really intriguing to me because Senfun Lim and Jake Cormier are pretty well-known designers. They've yeah. made a lot of good games. And this one's not funded. And there's only five days to go. That's what I was noticing. I was like, that doesn't Yeah, I don't seem know. That does look a little samey. I, I guess that's a hard, that, it's hard to put my finger on what I mean by that. Um, it's a city building game from the looks of it. It looks right. cool. Pattern, pattern building kind of. This I, I was excited when I like the top of it I was excited about. The title I was excited about, the designers. Um, I just recently it, saw the reprint from Big Kid Games for Monta uh, Montana. Ugh, I can't say that right. Montana. Montana. And I like the look of that. And yet the Further down I went in this project, the less inspiring I found it. The towels just look a little bland. Yeah. That was my issue with it. Maybe that's what folks are picking up on. It's got good bits too. I tell you, I'm I'm certainly interested in yeah. it. And it game trays back. <laughs> those look those great. Just those for those the game great. trays? No, but I, come I, on. No, but come on. Don't tell me you're not a little interested if you see game trays. No, like, I think they're cool, but that's not going to be the reason I back a game. Well, then you're shallow, or yeah. is it me? <laughs> Forget. It's I one back of games us. For game trays all the time. <laughs> I like the tokens too. I don't know. Big Kid also. Maybe it's the company. Big Kid isn't still a well-known name. I mean, they make games, but nothing that people know that strongly about. Was this at Dice Tower Con? I not that I remember. Think so. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, I hope this funds. It looks cool. Lou Pulsifer's Britannia Classic and New Dual Edition. Mm -hmm. So Britannia is a game that uh, was published by <coughs> Louis Pulsifer. It's a four-player game. I'd have to go back and remember that it's only four-player, but in this game you control multiple civilizations. You control four of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be yeah, You might be able to play two to four, I don't remember, but... You controlled four civilizations over the course of the game, so you might be the Romans, and at a certain time the Romans are not as good, then you're this group and this group and this group, okay. and you score points with all of them. It, but it's very much historical. Like, you can't be like, the Romans, we're going to do this. No, you're going to kind of follow a track. There's small variations, but I liked it, but I didn't love it because of that. Also, it's four hours. Fantasy Flight made a very nice version of it, yeah. but this, I guess he got the rights for it back. Yeah. So PSC, how do I know them? They make those? Uh, they made the um, World War I versions of Great the War. Command and Color, the Great War. Uh, Lincoln is one of their newer ones. Uh, they are doing Quartermaster General too, I think. Um, mm. uh, so all of those. My pro my. My problem with with um, with PSC is that they're called Plastic Soldier Company, and they're, usually their miniatures are not very good. They're uh, kind of like the miniatures you'd get if you went and bought Army Men at the store. No, they're not that bad, but they're like in between good miniatures and those. All right. They're not they're not that great. So that's usually what I've seen in the past is that their games have been good, but their components have not been as good. Um, like, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard for me to mess up the Command and Color system because I like it so much. Uh, but they've made some Revolutionary War uh, versions of it that the boards were abysmally designed. Mm. I mean, very bland. Uh, and then the terrain pieces that went on top of it were just as bad. Um, and, and again, their miniatures just aren't that super. Uh, they're not bad. They're just, ugh. Well, this you know. is a game that has a track record. It's been out before. It's yeah. back again if you've never been able to get it. 
right. and now with that dual part also included. So that makes it makes it says it's a faster two-player version of the game. Yeah. Yeah, this is something that's uh, that's got some history behind it already. It's not a brand new I, thing. So. I want, of course, I'm, I, I've never played Britannia, but I wonder the validity of having this game back when a game like 878 Vikings is still around. Well, but this one's mm. different. It has, you have those four it's, different it's factions. More of a Civ, it's more of a Civ type game. I get that. But 878 Vikings clocks in at an hour and a half, two hours. This is uh, twice as You know long. how I can tell this is different? The spelling. It's a different title. All right. Watch on the Rhine, the Siegfried Line campaign, 1944-1945. I, I thought this was Z's pick of the week, but... You really, you, you really clumped them here in the middle, didn't you? Well, I put them in the order I found them. This, mm -hmm. we, we point these like, out I was going through these. I like Britannia. Okay, Rhine. Okay. Come on, Tom. <laughs> Dig me back out, baby. <laughs> What, you're not fascinated by this map here? I am not. This looks like classic, old-school yeah, war no. game. Well, yeah, Britannia was, um, <laughs> if you were turned off by all that artwork and all like all these <laughs> newfangled ideas in gaming. Here's your Huckleberry. There it is. I do, well, okay, but the cover for this is really cool. It is a cool That's cover. That's a really nice cover. Yeah. It looks like a poster. So buy the game, keep the cover. All right. Does it, it might be a, fantastic. Does it have game trays. I'm just Rush MD, a real-time cooperative game set in a high-pressure medical center, which is not the first time a game like this has been made. Yeah, Doctor Doctor Panic. Panic did the same thing. You know what I disliked <laughs> about this? Unfortunately, I disliked about this immediately. Go back up to the top, right there. Uh, limited print run. Limited print run. I don't like. That the second thing I learn about your game is that There's I better get it or I'll miss out. Yeah, come on, that's just manipulative, man. And they're not even hiding it well. That turned me off almost immediately. I was like, really? I sure I, hope that those three things aren't on the cover. I, I but, guess. I guess no. though, it's it's. I don't know. It, it, it's better that they tell you on the onset, so that if that does bother you, you know to just to move on. I guess it just feels like let's instill the fear of FOMO in people, you know? Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. No. Here's okay, the thing. Because that's a lie. Because if this game sells like gangbusters, you're going to print more because money. Yes. It's you... only limited if it doesn't do that well. Every game is limited if you think about it. That's what I'm saying. Come on. Stop trying to scare me into buying your toy. All right. But the game itself looks fun. Although, incidentally, it's from the same company who made the food one, which is called um, Kitchen Rush. Kitchen Rush. It looks like Kitchen yes, Rush, right. the hospital game. Right. Which, since I like Kitchen Rush, I'm fine with. I like the hospital theme a lot. As long as it's cartoony like this, I'm okay with it. Like, sure. I, I don't watch ER because it's gross. You know, the... Yes, the actual... I, I, was, I was okay with this. I was even okay with the timers being the workers. Oh, look, it has cute little uh, uh, syringes. That's where I stopped. Why? This is a real-time game. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to have to use tweezers to pick up those little blood droplet pieces. Yeah. I think that's cool. <laughs> well, I like this I one. I want to see you rage cool. on this, Sam. <laughs> I also, how many games come with wooden kidney tokens? <laughs> wooden kidney tokens. And lung tokens. tokens. Hmm. And then pills, which is our way of saying discs. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know. I really like you the like components. The, you like the look it. of it? Okay. I do. I just, like, if I, how is this going to be different than Kitchen Rush? I mean, it's just another speed game. Right. Also, I like uh, David, one of the designers, uh, Tercy, a lot, but his stuff always tends to be more complex than not. Although, I think he did Kitchen Rush. I'm not sure. Um, All right, cool. One small step. This is from Academy Games, also history, and we are at the 50th anniversary of them landing on the moon, so of course this is going to come out. This is not the only game. Mm -hmm. on Kickstarter about this theme. Uh, Academy Games, going to the moon, United States versus Soviet, sounds awesome to me. Uh, not my pick of the week. No! Not my pick of the week. This is actually the one that I was telling you, if it looked better, it would have been my pick of the week. I thought 100% this would be you. No, Academy no. Games, it's no, moon! I, I, I completely agree. Uh, I, Vikings I want... on the moon? I don't think so. <laughs> Skip it. <laughs> if 
If it had looked better, I would have been all in. I still want to play the game. I'm still really excited to play the game. I think it's probably going to be really good. Do you good. think it might just be bad Graphic picture? design. Yeah, no, a bad yeah. picture. Oh, maybe. Like maybe when you see this in person. Maybe, maybe. Hopefully. But it just didn't, it just didn't grab me. Um, I was really interested in it. I love the the simulation that it's going to be, and I, uh, I'm, I'm really on board with everything. Just didn't look a little Oh, come on now. <laughs> Pledge level Apollo 11. Great. King Henry on the moon. <laughs> Get a copy oh, of it. Oh. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Vikings on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom on the moon. Oh, okay, I'm getting sad. Romans on the moon. Treasure on the moon. Sure you don't know which one. <laughs> ah, I got to give him. Ooh, I want satellite miniatures. Ooh. Apollo miniatures. Come on, yeah. Sam, change it. No, Come on, no. change it. You know you want to do it. No, I don't. I agree. The, the look on the cover especially looks very uninspired. I wish that. Uh, I hope it's not vinyl. I'm, I'm so pumped by this game. That looks really cool. Is this your pick? It is not. You guys have, neither one of you have, have said your picks yet, right? Well, maybe correct. it's the same thing. Margraves of Valeria. So Margrave is the name here of a military commander and also a way to differentiate this from the other Valeria games. I'm at the point now where if you say something of Valeria, I'll be like, uh, which one is it? You're like, the Machi Koro one. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what they should do, the Machi Koro of Valeria. I don't think the, they can get away with that, Tom. Probably not. So which one is this one like? It may not be like that. That board better be a prototype. Why? Mm. You were just talking about the moon one. That one looks very... That's not the board. The track board. Whatever That's that is, it doesn't look it's good. It's a track board. That's all it is. Well, I want some fancier tracks. There's there's part of the player board, and the, the, the player boards look amazing, and the uh, no, I'm, I'm, board looks amazing, That too. looks amazing, yes. The track board does not, but the board looks great. And this artist is fantastic. Yes. Although, yeah. I'm starting to wonder, like, that he just wakes up every day like, I will draw 20 people. And then a company's like, we need people. <laughs> we need people. <laughs> he draws just enough that he can fill in the rest later. What time period? Got it. Helmets. <laughs> <Whoop>. <laughs> no, I think he's a fantastic artist. So the player boards, you're right. They look great. They're different colors. And this looks, this all looks the good. The bits look good, yeah. I don't know. You know, again, I'm assuming it's probably a good game. It's just that the Valeria stuff is all starting to run together for me. Yeah. Well, this, the, I, I was interested in this one as well. Um, it's not my pick, but um, it yeah, looks, looks really good. This looks Keep pretty teasing good. Us this with looks this. pretty good. It looks really good. All righty. Trial by trolley. Here we go, fellas. Well, this is my not pick of the week. <laughs> okay. It's not both of yours? <laughs> no. It needs the bump, fellas. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> all right. Well, What's this, it at? How much? Two million, almost two point one. Yeah, two point zero six million. two weeks million. to go. So this this is actually one of two games that was showed up on Kickstarter with this exact theme. Really? Yeah. Well, I think part of it's because in the um, the Good Place TV show, this showed up. It was an episode about the trolley problem. Okay. So it got in people's attention. A lot of people never heard of it before. Essentially, the trolley problem. The original one is: do you hit someone you know? Or a bunch of people you don't know, or something like that. Which one, the the, the trolley's coming down. You pick which one it's going to hit. Oh, that's easy. So well, yeah, but they make it hard. A Can ten-year-old cancer up? survivor or a kitten cuddling with a dog. Well, here's another thing. Why don't we just hit the brakes and not hit anybody? <laughs> no, you can't. That's the not brakes the way around. That's the point. But uh, can you back up and hit both groups? <laughs> I'm going to take the other way. <laughs> Wait, sir, but this one's clear now. Let's the other way. <laughs> anyway, so is a kid cuddling kind of with your dog or a 10-year-old cancer survivor? Anyway, uh, you don't have to answer it because it's well, live. Because it's horrible. <laughs> yes, that's dog. the point. But then you can make them even worse. But, but then there's ways to add, uh, that you can add stuff to them. You, you know, can modify yeah, it as you go, I right? Saw it earlier, that guy is like a... Yeah, there it is, right there. He's he's uh, he has undetected terminal cancer, so he's technically going to die anyway. You yeah, know, you're trying to like sway the whoever's picking one way or the other by adding yes. modifiers. One person kind is of. the conductor, and the other people are teams trying to get you to, to go. Again, I you kind of know I what you're. I, you kind of know what you're getting with this company. You know, this is what they do. Sure, but unlike, I think I would play this. 
I mean, I would play any one of their games. I don't know if I would be like no, I get played, psyched about it. Joking you know? Hazard, Joking Hazard seemed like it was too. It was it dealt an adult humor, and this this could probably get there. No, but just the whole pick one or the I other. Adult ver- there's probably a lot of adult humor in here, but you didn't, you're not bothered by the very morbid dark humor. Well, I almost wish that you could take the trolley out of it and just say. Who would I kill? No, like who would you not kill? I guess is the it's better way. It's the same way. thing, Tom. <laughs> not quite. I not wouldn't quite. kill this group. Uh, that implies you would kill the in other one group. Situation a trolley is involved. No, in think of it other, this way. It's by hand. Think of it this way: the trolley is it's going different. down. I can save one group. It's the same thing. Not, okay? not, not exactly. Don't try to get psychological <laughs> oh, with is me. This, are you pulling this uh, Jeff Engelstein stuff on this? This is totally a Jeff I'm Engelstein rant. I'm making a rant. positive choice to save these people. Okay, you joking all aside, <laughs> that does make it feel better for me, though. If you're picking the one you would save, that, that, that sounds better to me. Well, then just assume that's what you're doing. That is what I'm doing. You're going to play this. I, is this your pick of the week? No. <laughs> <laughs> Etherfield's board game. Oh, here we go. Okay, got it. This is my pick of the and week. And Sam's. And my pick of the week. Oh, well. copycat. No, I didn't know. I picked it first. <laughs> this looks incredibly interesting to me. This is from one of my favorite Kickstarter companies, so Awaken Realms. I mean, yeah. I just, so far, I've either, the worst I can say about their games when I played one was, I liked it. As opposed right. to, I really like it. And also, this is one of my favorite box designs ever. I do wonder if it'll be... It does look really cool. If that effect will translate in real life. I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so either. If it does, that's awesome. <laughs> of course, I'll be like, you can put these boxes on the game shelf, but you got to... Like this one Tilt takes him. up a whole cube in a <laughs> yeah. calorie shelf. You yeah. gotta twist it just right. We'll walk in and be like, <gasps> <laughs> "There's a hole in your box." Um, yeah, but this one attracts me, a because it's Awakened Realms, but b because it's their version. It looks like of Seventh, Seventh Continent. Yes, absolutely. And I'm way on board with that. Seventh Continent with miniatures. <laughs> That's totally yes. what it looked like. I saw a play a play video of it, and that's absolutely how it seemed. I was. Mildly interested in those games that is so massive it pushed me out again. I think the actual theme on this one is a little bit more drawing than Seventh Continent, though. Drawing? Like, draws you in? Yeah. Appealing? Attractive. Uh, maybe. Because uh, it's very you're, dark, you're, you're actually. A, There's like, hats with eyeballs! But, but you're in a dream realm, you know? Yeah. Rather than just, oh, I'm going exploring on some unknown continent. That's awesome. Man, 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 man. <laughs> that is what they sound like. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, though. It's like, and there's more. But wait, there's more. There really was too much, yeah. <laughs> the Riddler expansion. Congratulations, Timmy. You get to drink from the fire hose. The harpy, look at this. Yay! The Harpy campaign says extra 30 hours of campaign play. I'm sorry. As if you don't get that much in the base game. It, no, that's, that's an just, extra. Yeah, that's probably just a fraction of the original game's content, right? Mm-hmm. I, there's a happy balance. I want a game that has some depth, some replayability that's great. I don't really need a game that I can get 100 hours of unique gameplay out of. You shut your mouth! I really don't. I feel wasteful at that point. I will never even scratch the surface on that game. Then you have you know what, made though? a good investment. I think possibly. No. But I think sometimes, in, like for Seventh Continent, I think I will eventually in it. And I disagree. I really do. You disagree that I'll say everything in Seventh Continent? Yes. Why? Because it's because you play a bunch of games every week. I'm sorry, there's no way. And let's say you let's say you do on that one game. You forget. There's these other four games that you said the same thing about or thought the same sure, thing about. Sure, sure, sure. You'll never. No, I get I'll that. I'll make sure I'm you don't. For I will that. kill you before <laughs> you, you see every card. You but what about the other track? You <laughs> forget he cheats. <laughs> He'll sit there and just look through the cards. That's actually true. You don't know that? He does. Mm, he'll come in next week and be like, I did it. <laughs> I know, right? I've seen all the cards in Seventh <laughs> Continent. <laughs> I hate you both. All right. <laughs> Dinogenics, Controlled Chaos, and Second Printing. See, I thought this might be your pick of the week. Well, the, the, here's the thing. There's fewer Kickstarters this week, but there was a few really cool ones. Yeah. I really like Dinogenics, but this is a way for them to sell it again plus an expansion which adds Jurassic Park 3 or Jurassic World Justin, Jurassic World yeah not 3 Justin Hunt is calling you out what did he say? he says Z is such a hypocrite hello Arkham Horror LCG that's very easy to see everything in that yeah 
Oh, that's not true at all. Oh, yeah. In you fact, just... a lot of people complain that once you play through a scenario once, it's expensive because it's like 12 bucks for about an hour and a half of content. Mm -hmm. So play through it again. I do, often. But you've seen everything at that point. It's night and day compared to something like Gloomhaven. That's like 80 hours. Not until we're done. We're going to count up how much all those expansions cost together. Oh, it's, it's a lot of money. I'm not saying the investment, okay? <laughs> if you have the money, spend it. I worry about being wasteful is what I'm saying. A game that's designed to have so much depth that you'll never see it all or experience it all. I can play through Arkham well, that's like a thing. weekend. I think, I think we're using our experience as the norm. And that cannot be. No, but I'm telling you, I, cannot I, be. I, mean, I actually do agree with Zia on that. Regular Joe Schmo who goes out and buys Gloomhaven, we don't know that he plays multiple games every week. Regular we, Joe he might be playing Gloomhaven six times a week. He might, but regular Joe Schmo, by the time he got to Gloomhaven, collected 350 games. Yeah, <laughs> true. Because you know, Joe, you've been spending that money. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. All right, back to Dinogenics. Look, yes. we played this one. Yeah. And now there's more dinosaurs. Water dinosaurs. No, I, I, I do, I do like that. This. this is really close to being my pick of the week as well because I really enjoyed Dinogenics. Really enjoyed it. And this, from what I can tell, just adds more kinds of dinosaurs to it yeah. and one extra. Board. I like that the Megalodon, Megalodon is in there. That's not yeah. even a dinosaur, but I want it. <laughs> That's awesome. And, it's, and it also adds more DNA to the cards and stuff, and now you can have these in your mm -hmm. area. I don't know. It also makes it that your, I feel like your Jurassic Park will look different than mine. Yeah. So, yeah, cool, cool. I'm excited about this. <coughs> yeah. Then there's another dinosaur game. I That's thought this was right. really weird. These both popped up together. This one did fund, but it really suffers by looking at the other one. Sure. What? Okay, if the other one didn't exist... I'm not feeling the art on this one, really. If the other one didn't exist and we were 20 years in the past, this might do well. Yeah, you're right. It looks kind of like 90s. I think this would do okay before Kickstarter just kind of became a place where the really big the boys come out to play. Graphic you know? design is just not. Doesn't this feel like a Kickstarter game by the pure definition of what that used to mean? Yeah. Sure. Now, you're getting, you're getting slaughtered. You know what? The more I'm looking at this art... I'm liking it more. It, it's, it's all right. Clean. It just feels indie. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Here's what I... Fucking tails. The person making this game probably does need the no, money. It like, it's like they're doing high five with their tails. That's what dinosaurs used to do. Here's the thing, though. This definitely looks like a take that game to some degree. Whenever there's a card like this, denied. Stop someone else's action mm -hmm, card. Mm -hmm. Or, I don't know. I'm hoping it's better, but it looks like a take that game to some degree. It comes with the coloring book. Pick, oh. a, pick of the week for you, Sold. right here. Dice, here was my. At, this is actually my runner-up for pick of the week. Okay. Dice Throne Adventures in season this one re-roll. Really good. But well, you played the, the previous played one a lot. I played Dice Throne. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was amazing, but then I played it more and I enjoyed it more. Some by Dice Throne Two was just as good as the first one. I think the characters were slightly better and the production value went through the roof. Mm. So now they're going back and they're redoing season one to match the f second production. Okay. Which you don't have to get. And it looks like there's miniatures too, which I don't think you have to get. Um, and then more environment tiles. They're just they're kind of like, hey, let's take this up another notch. And I think there's a a third set of characters here, right? See, is it season three? I think. So these are the we got the all sixteen dice thrown heroes are cross compatible. I know that. Okay, cool. I like the artwork on those. That's yeah, but awesome. see, now you're picking these people and then going through a world and with jumping around. They're like taking this, oh. what's a pure battle game, and making it a board game, too. Got it. Now, I don't know if that's any good or not, right? Sure. I'm right. always a little yeah, nervous yeah. about taking something that works really well and turning it into a different game. See Race for the Galaxy, for examples. Or Mortal Kombat Adventures Sub-Zero. They made a Mortal Kombat like game in which you would just walk through a world as Sub-Zero. So it was like a side-scroller, yeah. and every now and then you'd get into a normal Mortal Kombat fight. Oh, really? And between the fights, you'd just walk. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an okay game. Oh, this stuff looks so good. That's kind of what this makes me think of, like a regular fighting, and then they're like, well, let's throw an adventure in there on top of it. Mm -hmm. That's not always a good fit, but hopefully, uh, you know, it works out. You know, this is one of the it looks best good. It looks productions real good. that there is. <sighs> 
Look at all that. The pre-painted stuff 340, is really good. You can get Brown everything. $340. Yeah, I'm in, a, man. I'm that in is a like ton Flynn. of stuff. Or you for can a... feed your family for a month. <laughs> Oh, Have you seen they my can family? eat plastic if they yes. want. It's like a day. You could do that. Yeah, I know no, you could. You know what? Three forty. Alrighty. Groceries. You eat when you beat me at Game Thrones. Ah, right, let's jump to our. <laughs> 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 so like you're saving money that way. It's the the feeding problem. I can feed one kid some food, or a group of strangers. Huh. I made the trolley problem not as bad. We should go to some contributors. Let's do that. Hey folks, and welcome to FOMO, the segment where I take a look at a game that's seeking crowdfunding right now. Maybe I have a fear of missing out on it. Maybe you do too, and we'll take a look together. Today, we're gonna to take a look at Shazen. In Shazen, players look to control the majority of voters in regions in order to win the election. Now, this isn't about the popular vote. It's about getting the majority in those regions. At the start of a player's turn, the player to their right will read aloud a card that will have a yes or no question based on a political issue. The player will then decide how they would like to answer the question based on what their goals are in the game and what political ideology they're trying to get. Note, this is not the player's personal beliefs. This card is then placed under their board beneath their matching ideology and gives the player resources depicted. They can then spend resources to buy voter cards in order to place out new voters in a region. They can form majorities in a region, buy or use conspiracy cards, trade resources with other players, gerrymander, trigger headlines, or form or break coalitions with other players. Majorities are printed on the board in the regions, and when a player has a majority, they flip over the number of voters in that region, matching the printed amount needed. This now unlocks gerrymandering in that region, which allows the player to move voters around within adjoining regions. Conspiracy cards grant abilities to the player to use and can be used right away or held till later. Coalitions can be formed with other players at the table in order to jointly hold the majority in a region. As a player gains ideology cards under their board, they also will unlock abilities for that specific ideology as well. Headline cards are triggered when a voter is placed into a volatile spot out on the board. The game ends when a majority has been formed in every region of the board and players count up the number of majority voters that they have on the board, both in zones they control alone and in any coalitions they may still be a part of. However, if all voter spaces have been filled up but not all majorities have been won, then each player gets one final turn to try and form or collapse coalitions, play conspiracy cards, in order to try and win the game. Okay, so that's a look at Shazen, and can I just say, wow, I've already grown fully enamored with this one. First off, the production quality and what I have as a prototype is beyond fantastic. The artwork, while not my particular style, is sparse and functional, and honestly, given the abstract nature of the game, I don't feel this game needs much more in the way of artwork. As to the gameplay itself, this really does feel like a political simulation, and I find myself comparing this game to another simulation game I very much love, Smartphone Inc. While these two games are very different, they do share a similar feel to me and overall the ability to convey abstractly the simulation of what they are trying to achieve. Now included in the copy I received was a US political deck as well as an Indian one, and I found myself drawn to the US one from a personal standpoint, but also found it very interesting the types of issues that were facing the India voters in their particular deck versus the US. However, with that said, the issues aren't the center stage here, and players are not choosing their answer to these questions based on their own beliefs, which I feel really works for this game. It's in this game's favor. With that said, though, I can see a potential for problems here with some groups, as they may not be able to separate their own beliefs, so do be aware of this. The forming of coalitions and trading with players really amps up the political maneuvering throughout the game, and I especially liked how it reinforced the majority votes in regions over the popular vote, meaning a player could hold the popular vote across the board and still lose the election in the end. The headlines and conspiracy cards add just the right amount of intrigue to the game without slowing it down or causing too much disruption in the gameplay. Overall, this game plays at a fast speed, it's easy to pick up by new players, and really captures the theme it is trying to bring across in a largely abstract enough way so as to not 
be a truly political issues game. There's a political simulation game. This is done really well and really smooth. If you're a fan of simulation games, and especially I think if like me, you're a fan of games like Smartphone Inc., then this is a game worth giving a look to and you should check out their Kickstarter page. Until next episode, when I see you folks again, remember, choose your FOMOs wisely and support the projects and creators that you are interested in. Sister Meeple here, bringing you my three most anticipated board games launching on Kickstarter in the next two weeks. July 25th, starting off on the lighter side with a game that is launching tomorrow, we have Carroll County Cake Swap. Draw or draft your cake layers to create cakes with specific goals in mind, collect your prize ribbons and add them up for the win. An element of Take That has inspired the slogan, a card game for baking perfectionists and those who like to sabotage them. Also launching July 25th, we have the highly anticipated Smartphone Inc., an economic simulation Euro game about buying and selling smartphones. Over five rounds, players program their decisions about price, production, research, and expansion in order to earn more profits and become the most successful company in the world. Some have said it reminds them of a streamlined food chain magnate, which sounds like a good thing. July 29th. Adventure Tactics Domian's Tower is an encounter-based, campaign-driven, cooperative deck builder. Begin your journey as one of five basic classes and battle your way through a branching campaign where you choose your own path in an attempt to overthrow the evil queen Domian. With each encounter, you will level up and unlock over 15 elite classes, adding new actions, equipment, and abilities. Here are the painted minis which are available as an add-on. Kickstarter is pretty slow these days, but if I've left out your favorite upcoming game, let me know in the comments below. Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview Recap. I'm Mark, and today we got a couple games to look at. The first up is Shasen. In Shasen, you are in the middle of a heated campaign under immense pressure to use resources, voters, and deal with conspiracies along with potential news headlines that might wreck your campaign. Will you stick to your ideals or will you do what it takes to win in this political race? So Shashin is a political strategy game, which surprised me how much I liked it because it is totally not a theme that I would gravitate towards or even entertain typically. But they did a really nice job with this game. Interaction with people at the table has been great and I like the area control or majority control over the zones, influencing voters, all that was really interesting and using resources in order to do all the things you need to do. The other thing worth noting about Sasson is the incredible production value. Even in the prototype, I was really blown away. This one caught me by surprise. And next up, we have Materia Prima. Materia Prima is a game based in alchemy. You'll be scouring the landscape, mining for precious materials, trying to look in dusty old libraries for recipes in order for you to create the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, but your quest involves so much more than just the Philosopher's Stone. You're looking to have the most wisdom throughout the game and complete your personal quest while holding on to your soul stone. So the thing about this game is that it really pulled me in due to all the elements and how you convert them and how you summon your homunculi, if I'm saying that right, uh, they really help you out throughout the game, all in a quest to find the Philosopher's Stone. And of course, all the wide variety of helpers or homunculi that you can summon, again, needing elements and converting elements to the right recipe of them to summon those creatures. I like how the recipes work to build the stone as well as trying to hold on to your soul stone. So there was a lot of neat things about this game. I like the battles at before the end of the game when you get maximum points for doing all the things. And uh, I think they did a really nice job here. It was really engaging, even though I managed to lose poorly against my daughter. All right, so my pick of the week. You know, I like the fact that Sasha took me by surprise and uh, how much I really enjoyed it, but Materia Prima is definitely more my style of game. I really enjoyed this one, so check it out. And the most recent game I've been working on is Shovel Knight. Yes, this is based on the video game of the same name, and 
is a side-scrolling adventure in a board game. So keep an eye out for this one coming in August. All right, folks, if you want more information about any of the games mentioned here, please go check out my full preview. And remember, these are paid previews. So if any of these games look of interest to you, that's what's important. All right, now, if you want your game featured as a Dice Tower preview, please shoot me an email. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see you at the table. Hey, board gamers, BJ from Board Game Gumbo here back with another episode of Crowd Surfing Lawn Yop. That's right. I'm bringing you projects that won't break your budget, but throw in a little something extra. Here's what I'm checking out this week. The Damsel's Tale is a brand new project from Red Eating Games out of Australia. It's a two-player, check that, a three-player game now, where a brave knight is trying to sneak past scary dragons to bring back treasure and glory. Or a baby dragon is desperately trying to rouse the mama dragon to prevent a nasty thief from stealing the crown in their hoard. I guess it all depends on your perspective, right? Players each play from a unique deck of cards. Each player draws a hand of four cards, simultaneously plays the card without showing the other player, and then they resolve with the lowest card going first and take the appropriate actions. The entire game plays in about 20 minutes, the icon iconography looks easy to learn, and the brand new two versus one feature adds an additional player to the mix. The game comes in a cool little box shaped like a book, but a handy box sleeve is included if you prefer your games to have a certain look on the shelf. Plus, there's some cool lanyap. Not only is there a free two versus one expansion, but there are also extra cards and custom printed meeples. The pledge level is simple. For 23 bucks, players will get one copy of the game delivered to them in the United States. So that's The Damsel's Tale, out on Kickstarter right now from Red Genie Games. It's a reasonably priced two versus one asymmetrical card game with some lanyap, those beautiful custom meeples. Until next time, les ailes les bon temps roulé. Hi, this is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today I'm gonna to talk about what to do if your Kickstarter project is struggling and you think it may not be successful in terms of funding. There are other ways it can be successful, but um, the general idea here is that 64% of all Kickstarter projects fail. So the odds are actually that your project won't succeed, which isn't very heartening, but it's good to know up front that your project just may not succeed. We'll get into some reasons about that why in a second. Um, my overall philosophy on a project that is struggling to fund is that uh, given that Another, here's another stat, 93% of projects make less than 25% of their goal by day seven. So if you are a week into your project and you haven't at least gotten up to the 25, maybe 30, hopefully more percentage mark, you might wanna consider canceling your project and reevaluating what's going on because a few things could be happening. And this is why I advocate canceling at that point rather than just waiting it out. However, if your project is up to, say, you know, 30, 40, 50% funding after the first week, uh, that's fine. I would, I would highly recommend continuing that project and continuing to hone it, focus it, uh, do the right thing for your backers, bring in more backers, that's great. But if you, by, by the first week, by the end of the first week, if you haven't reached 25 or 30% funding, um, I'd recommend looking at these things because you might just be doing something wrong. Your art may not be good enough. Your, your prices may not be right. Your funding goal may be too high. There may be some core elements of your project that just aren't working for backers. Two, there may not, there may not be enough demand for your, for your product. Um, that's quite possible. It, not every game is going to fund. Not every project is going to fund. Sometimes people just aren't going to want it. And that's okay. I know that's disheartening. Um, if you've put so much of your, your passion, your time and energy into it, but it is possible and you need to acknowledge that possibility. Last, there is a possibility that a big fundamental change is needed. Uh, for example, if you have a miniatures project and you realize that people just don't want the miniatures or the other way around, that's something that you can't really change on the fly in a project. You need to start over, reboot, reevaluate. If you do decide to cancel, um, I would recommend first, before you cancel, post an update to your backers so they know that it's about to happen. Um, hopefully you do have some existing backers. And then update your project page before you cancel so that anyone who discovers the project page later can see, okay, it, it didn't fund, but the creator is going to come back later and, and post a new project. Then, after you're done with that, go ahead and cancel the project, 
pull your backers and pull non-backers to see why they didn't back the project or pull the, and pull your backers to see uh, what they think could be done better with a reboot. Um, I would recommend cutting some things and adding value at the same time. For example, uh, I, Tau said he had a very re a memorable reboot because they had, I think, five or six players in the original game. They decided to cut it down to four players, but they added one of their premium components that was originally just a stretch goal. They added it from day one, and when they relaunched, they funded very quickly because their prices were lower, but they had this new special component that was very attractive to people. Make sure to nurture your original backers. Don't forget about them. That's really, like, that's the the most important audience that you can possibly appeal to because they've already told you that they are interested in your project don't forget about them keep on acknowledging them keep them in the loop let them give you more feedback as you prepare the new project page and last give it a little time you don't need to reboot the next day the next week even the next month give it a little time and that will show your original backers and new backers that uh, you put in proper time and energy to uh, to have a successful reboot. They don't want to see a really, really quick reboot. That can sometimes uh, be a turnoff for existing and new backers. There's lots more to discuss. Feel free to check out my blog about, uh, there's an entry called To Cancel or To Finish on kickstarterlessons.com. There's also an entry about uh, rebooting your project. You can search for the word reboot and find it or post your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks. This episode is brought to you by GameFound. Create a free pledge manager for your project. All right, first of all, before we jump into the topic here, I want to say a quick thank you to Jamie. Jamie recorded a ton of segments for crowd surfing way back in the day, and that was the last one. So we appreciate all him doing stuff for the show and sharing his expertise with the world. Very cool. Con pickup. Real quick subject today because we got Gen Con coming up. And yes. I noticed that when I back a Kickstarter, you can sometimes, not very rarely actually, but sometimes you can mm -hmm. say, I'd like to pick this up at a con. That's one of the options for shipping. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that? No, but I've backed very few things. Same here. Would you do it as a, as a consumer? Or would you rather have it just sent to your house? What? I would rather... Hmm. If you're going to the con. Depends on how you're getting to the con. If you're flying to the con, that's problematic. I agree. That's exactly my answer, I think. If I'm flying, send it to me. Yeah. Does money make a difference there? I mean, because. 15 it, bucks or whatever to ship it? No, at that point, no. I don't want to go, like, after I've waited for my game for a year, go to the convention, get it, and then it gets banged up on the flight home. No. I just send it to me. True. Well packaged. I'll just get it at home. If I'm driving though, and I can get it today, you know, at the convention, maybe even mess with it in my hotel room at night, uh, before next week when I would get it in the mail, then yeah, sure, I pick it up. I mean, what what negatives would you see to picking it up at the convention? Well, so the negatives are from a different angle. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult for the publisher to do it. Because they have to have the list of people there. They yeah. have to have the games there. And then they have to pretty much hide the games if they can. Because here's what happens. If the game is a hot game mm -hmm. and they're selling it there and giving it to backers and they sell out. And this has definitely happened at convention. Sure, before right. you go there, you're like, oh. And like, I'm sorry, these are for backers only. And you're like, well, then I, why is it sitting there? And I have seen companies do that where they have their Kickstarter backer come their 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 fulfillment copies in a in an office, and they have a separate line set up for Kickstarter backers to come in and pick up their copy. Then they right. have their stock that's for sale during the convention there as well. Yeah, and yeah, they, it's a they, good they, idea. They keep them both separate and you don't delve into one for the other. Sure, but then the one sells out. <laughs> and I yeah, see this happen for sure. And then they'll say, usually, they'll be like, if they don't come by Sunday, come back, and maybe you'll get one of these copies. And then people are like, oh, I hope that person doesn't get the copy they ordered. Yeah. <laughs> because that's right. Because that also is bad for the company if you never do come by to pick up the copy. Mm -hmm. Because then they have that copy that they could have sold. Yes. Yeah, no, I get that, but they don't have to. I mean, that's on the company if they want to offer that service. They don't have to. Just ship it out then, you know? That's logistical, and it's, it's a logistic issue that's on them. It doesn't have anything to do with the backers. If they choose to do it, then those are simply 
questions they need to answer. Right. Real quick, we want to say thank you to Bob for your very kind words. He said really nice things about you. Um, thank you, Bob. Uh, are you lying? Though? No, I'm not. No, 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 no I'm not. Um, and anyway, he, someone here mentioned um, they were glad that they did this with Project Elite because the fulfillment was such a disaster. There is a point for that, bird in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To no, go there I agree. and be like, um, you know, some, some but that's, that's actually worse because that means the company didn't do a very good job at yeah. fulfilling it. But you but can be you like, are, well, at least they got my copy. If you are worried about it. I guess that's one way to look at it, yeah. And Gator Dave mentioned size being a thing. If it's a small game, why not pick it up? Sure. Rather yeah. than have it no, sent to you. They, these are all valid valid things to consider. I mean, it's just, it, I, I think at the end of the day, whether or not it's something you do or not, it's largely dependent on your specific situation, whatever it might be. It's not like a, you can't issue a blanket, this is a good thing to do, or this is a bad thing to do. It really depends on what your specific circumstance is. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of it, I would also sort of think about the company that's making and fulfilling the game and whether I've seen their how they operate at conventions if it's something I'd want to do at the convention or just let them ship it hmm. you know what I mean is it the kind of booth that's always busy uh, does it seem like they've got a lot of people running around a lot of staff is it going to be problematic for me to go find who I need to talk to show them my documentation have them find matching documentation cross me off a list or something or is it a company that I've always found works very smoothly maybe it's a small booth you know what I mean all these things yeah. but but they're on a on a case to case basis I, I can't like since I'm saying I can't really do a blanket uh, opinion for that sometimes you might want to play the game at the con at that point, you backed it. It doesn't really matter. No, but I mean, well, then I don't want to wait till it oh, shows you mean, up. Oh, you mean play your own copy as opposed to go and sit and play a demo copy. Right. It's one right, way, right. It well, doesn't matter. Yeah, well, yeah. no, but if you're going to go out into the wild and at the con. I'll play my games outside. Gator Dave says, Batman all in, pick it up, and bend with your knees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, but there's also, though, sometimes, and this is very much the case, fulfillment is really slow. Sometimes yeah. if you do the pickup at a con, you'll get it a month or two before everybody else. Right, so if that right. matters to you, you go and get it early. If I was driving somewhere, I'm telling you, I probably would. Yeah. It's I 99% mean, it's, likely I would just get it there. It's the whole luggage aspect. If you've got a, you know, the family station wagon, you can fill up the back of that sucker with, you know, 200 games. It's so a kids, lot a station wagon yeah. is a long car. Yeah, right. <laughs> Google that, kids. I watched Stranger Things 3. They had a station yes, wagon. there you go. That's right. Um, all righty. Well, that's kind of my thoughts on that. It was not a big deal, but it is something I thought of because I just recently backed the Kickstarter, and that was an option. Okay. And I thought, hmm. So I did it, but now I'm wondering if I, re if I will regret it. Because it's another thing on the docket. Because it's another docket of the thing I yeah, had to do at that con. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, but at least I'll have it in my hand. Sure. I've never done it before, so I'm also kind of doing it as an experiment. Like, yeah, well, yeah, what's okay. it like to go pick it up in person? It's delicious experiment. <laughs> uh, Jim says, a new stockpile expansion is an interesting case study. Pick it up at Gen Con or back it. Do the pickup and get it two months early or pay through Board Game Geek, otherwise use the Kickstarter. Huh. So if you pick it up and, and they give it to you there, you get it sooner? There's the question, really, for me is, do you think the companies are encouraging people to pick them up at conventions. Because that sounds think like so. a yes, like a big, big yes, right? The company is saying, we definitely come and pick it up here, your stockpile copy, and that saves us shipping logistics. Mm -hmm. Come get it here. Not really, though, because for the company to get a game to, companies don't usually make tons of money on getting games to a con because they have to... Get them there. They're paying for the booth. When you take all these costs out, taking a, selling a game at a con does not make you a lot of money. Then why offer it in the first place? Buzz. Or maybe they can sell the game if they have there for fulfillment. How about that? You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, technically we will fulfill next month. But if you want to pick it up at the convention, we're bringing some anyway because we are selling. You're technically not being denied your copy. You know, like no one else is getting it before you're getting it. If you come and pick it up. Wait, so you've already charged them for shipping? <laughs> yeah, that's true, right? What's the story with that? Do you return them the shipping money at that point? It's inside the game, <laughs> in an envelope. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the uh, game that pays you back. Well, okay, so 
Case point for you. You're at the con. They're like, hey, we managed to ship in these games early. You're like, oh, I backed that. They're like, well, I can give you it now, but you're not going to get your shipping back. Would you do it? That's a good question. Now we're talking <laughs> ponderables. <laughs> Dilemmas. Scruples. The Kickstarter version. Wow, that's interesting. Um, I would. Yeah, I would sit there and go, oh, I'll take it now. Okay, I'll lose the money, whatever. How about you just let me open it? Fifteen dollars good and loud. That's a lot of money. I'll give it back to you and wait for my copy to come. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think I would take it. If I'm driving again, everything else being the same. Yeah, keep the ten bucks or fifteen bucks, and I'll take it now. All right. Well, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching another crowd surfing. We'll be back tomorrow twice in the morning with board game breakfast with a regular surprise unboxing, uh, and then in the afternoon with our top ten anticipated games from Gen Con. That's right. What? Number four will shock you. <laughs> so, <laughs> until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks, like everybody. Thank you much. I'm Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.